You've probably heard of Sumatra Island, but have you ever considered it as a potential vacation spot? If yes, then let me tell you the hurting truth of it. Hey folks, welcome back to The Unknown Facts. Today we are going to talk about the largest volcano ever that just cracked open the earth. So without wasting any further time, let's begin. Sumatra Island may be the sixth largest island in the world, but its fascinating beauty and abundant environment more than make up for its size. Sumatra is an island in the Indonesian archipelago that is well known for its rough, tropical topography and numerous active volcanoes. One such is Lake Toba. It is the deepest and largest lake in Southeast Asia, with an island about the size of Singapore. Samosir is the fifth largest lake island in the world, and the largest island within an island. The promotional material for the site encourages visitors to sit back, relax, and absorb, describing it as a great location to do nothing at all. But underneath this calm surface lies a violent reality. An enormous volcanic explosion occurred in Lake Toba about two million years ago. There have been four major eruptions in the Lake Toba area. The first, 1.2 million years ago, from a large stratovolcano at the northwest end of Lake Toba, then 840,000 years ago, towards the south of Lake Toba, then 500,000 years ago, at the northern end of Lake Toba, and finally, 74,200 plus or minus 900 years ago. The tough strata created by the eruptions are referred to by their respective acronyms Herringol Dacite Tuff, HDT, Oldest Toba Tuff, OTT, Middle Toba Tuff, MTT, and Youngest Toba Tuff, YTT. More than 20,000 square kilometers were covered by tuff and lava from the YTT eruption, with a normal thickness of 50 meters. The flows reached the ocean on both sides of Sumatra. The paucity of ash at the base of the lava suggests that the initial stages of the eruption did not involve a Plinian phase, suggesting that there was fountaining to a great height, but no big explosions and that velocities were moderate. The deeper Silicapur magma filled the caldera and likely erupted during the collapse of the caldera, whereas the more superficial flows originated from the silica-rich upper half of the magma chamber. Ash from Toba has been detected as far away as the Arabian Sea and Lake Malawi, covering an estimated 7 million square kilometers. The Indian Ocean became the final resting place for many. While the ash layer is often just 10 centimeters thick, it can be as much as 3 meters deep in some spots. Rivers likely acted as a concentrator for the thickest layers. The ash is bimodal, with a coarser layer at the bottom and a finer one over. In further away locations, the lower layer is invisible. A total of 2,800 cubed kilometers DRE, or about 1,000 kilometers cubed of lava, was erupted by Toba. Just picture this. It took Bardarbunga six months to erupt one kilometer cubed of material. When Laki was smothering Iceland, it erupted a cubic kilometer every two weeks. About this much ash was thrown into the air every 10 minutes by Toba's eruptions. Even compared to Tambora, its pace of eruption was 10 times quicker. A Volcanic Outburst by piecing information together, we may gain a sense of the general course of the eruption. The crystallization process took place during its 150,000-year existence. As the crystals settled, the upper half of the reservoir became silica-rich, while the lower part became silica-poor and crystal-rich. The buoyancy of the magma pushed up the ceiling of the magma chamber, and the heat eventually weakened and melted the roof, causing it to break. In contrast to regular eruptions, supervolcanoes do not require a new intake of magma to commence an eruption once the melt fraction reaches 50%, and the overpressure of the massive magma chamber can spontaneously shatter 10 kilometers of rock. Large earthquakes were likely triggered by the cracking, which in turn may have been preceded by significant inflation. Three years before the eruption, Krakatoa experienced a major earthquake. The initial lava flowed out of a small opening created by the first crack. The pressure below began to shift as magma began to escape, leading to further cracking and a rapid increase in the severity of the eruption. Lava began to emerge from additional locations along the ring fracture, and by the end of the year, the entire ring was covered with lava. The duration of this first stage is only conjectured. For Krakatoa, it lasted for a number of months. All the eruptions emanated from the periphery of the caldera, not the center. At this point, the lava was spewing at rates that have never been seen before or anywhere in the world. Pyroclastic flows traveled hundreds of kilometers after being triggered by the collapse of fountains, which occurred primarily in the eruption's early and middle stages. 
Eventually, the entire width of Sumatra was buried by a layer of lava and tuff 50 meters thick. They were also used to make the 300 meter tall cliffs that encircle the lake. When the pressure in the magma reservoir dropped too far, the ridge quickly collapsed, creating a chasm two kilometers deep within a matter of days or weeks. Caldera collapse slowed the eruption, and ejecta remained confined to the caldera. The magma now originated from the original reservoir's lower levels, which were increasingly depleted in silica. The volcano's outburst fizzled out in the end. Since then, the volcano has been rather quiet. The magma reservoir began to refill, and the center of the caldera began to swell some 40,000 years after the eruption. Cones emerged from new magma that reached the surface in a few places. Although overall eruptions were modest and concentrated along the ring fault, the peak re-emerged as a dome, reformed into an island, and was given the name Samosir. Approximately 1,100 meters of elevation gain have been recorded. Samosir's massive magma chamber, located below the surface, has a nearly perfect spherical shape. To the north, partially beneath the lake and partially to the west of the caldera, is another smaller magma chamber. There has been a decline in Samosir's rate of ascent. Is there a particular reason that Toba developed into a supervolcano? Toba, like every other Indonesian volcano, receives its energy from subduction rather than a hotspot. The volcanoes on Sumatra are oddly clustered near a fault. The western edge of the Toba caldera is located on the Sumatra Fault, which extends the full length of the island. In this case, the Indian-Australian plate is subducting beneath the Southeast Asian plate, and the fault runs in a parallel direction to the offshore Sunda Megathrust Fault. This subduction in Sumatra is not taking place at right angles to the faults. Rather, the plate is sliding under and also shifting laterally to the north. In reality, the YTT ejecta bear witness to this fact. They have been shifted by two kilometers on either side of the fault. Therefore, the fault must be moving at a rate of 2.7 centimeters each year. In the northwestern part of Toba, the slide rate is higher than the southern part. The resulting chasm becomes problematic over time. To the south of Lake Toba, this is now taking place. Were there even more dire climatic repercussions? There was a profound glacial era that lasted for a thousand years, and the eruption occurred almost exactly at the beginning of it. Remember that volcanoes create cool summers, but not cold winters, thus Toba couldn't have caused this all by itself. However, Toba may have altered ocean currents. The Earth may have been pushed over the edge into a new temporary ice age as a result of this. A lot of exaggeration is there in the so-called Toba disaster idea, yet this is still a possibility. But if this had occurred in the present day, it would have been a disaster. Our culture cannot withstand a disaster of the scale of Toba. Then how can we predict the next eruption? Fortunately, Toba-sized eruptions only happen once every million years on average. It is possible that VEI-8 earthquakes, like the one at Taupo, only happen once every 100,000 years. From a risk management perspective, we need to be ready for situations that occur once in 10,000 years. There is currently a negligible chance of a major eruption from Toba. Because the repose times have been very stable at roughly 400,000 years, the next one is not expected to occur until around 300,000 AD. The year AD 300,000 seems so far away. While Yellowstone's average repose period is 600,000 years, Toba's is 335,000 years, making them comparable. The frequency with which this occurs is low, but supervolcanoes have been known to do it multiple times. The typical rates of volcanic activity can also be used as a useful lens through which to examine this phenomenon. Do you think an eruption could happen at any moment? Tell us in the comments down below. We hope the video was entertaining. We can't do this without our viewers, so please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to see more of our amazing and informative videos.